Easter is considered a tradition for most families, as they gather and celebrate with the usual festivities. However, on an unfaithful Easter Sunday in 1975, a man would viciously murder his entire family in what would be considered as one of the most ungodly murders in U.S. history. Today on Morbid Case Files, we will be discussing the Easter Sunday Massacre of 1975, an Easter Sunday that would change the Rupert family's lives forever. James Urban Rupert was born on March 29, 1934, and resided in Hamilton, Ohio. He had a very miserable and cruel upbringing. His mother would always look down upon him and even went further by calling him a mistake because she wanted a daughter instead of another son. His father was a very violent man with a quick temper. He gave very little time and affection for his two sons as he was constantly drunk and just didn't care. He would later die in 1947 when James was only 12 years old. Leonard Jr., James' older brother, would become the head of the house, and according to James, he would always pick on him constantly. In school, James would always do poorly, and he had very few friends, and was always frowned upon by his peers for not being as good as his older brother. At the age of 16, James was so depressed at home that he attempted to hang himself with a bed sheet. However, he failed to do so, and instead of seeking treatment, he would spiral down a relentless path of depression and misery. As James got older, his jealousy and rage for his brother grew. James would drop out of college after two years, while Leonard earned a degree in electrical engineering and excelled in many sports. To make matters worse, Leonard would go on to marry one of the few girlfriends that James had ever had, with whom he had eight children with. Leonard had a great job with General Electric where James, at age 41, was unemployed and living with his mother. On top of it all, James owed money to his family, from whom he had borrowed large sums after losing what little he had in the stock market crash of 1973-74. to his mother would become so frustrated with his inability to keep a job and his constant drinking that she would threaten to evict him from the home, and it was that threat that would send James over the edge. On March 29th, James's birthday, witnesses had claimed seeing him shooting at cans with a 357 Magnum along the banks of the Great Miami River in Hamilton. He would later go out that night to the 19th Ho Cocktail Lounge, where he talked with bartender Wanda Bishop. She recalls James being deeply depressed as he ranted about his mother's demands on him and her threat to evict him. He told her that he needed to solve the problem. He would leave the bar at 11 p.m. only to return. When asked if he had solved his problem, he replied, No, I haven't. He would stay at the bar until it closed at 2.30 in the morning. On Easter Sunday, Leonard and his wife Alma brought their eight children to see their grandmother at the house on Minor Avenue. James stayed upstairs sleeping off his night of drinking while the children enjoyed an Easter egg hunt in the front yard. Afterwards, they came inside and went into the living room while Charity, Alma, and Leonard finished lunch preparations. Around 4 p.m., James woke up, loaded his 357 Magnum, two 22 caliber handguns, and a rifle, and went downstairs. He entered the kitchen where he shot and killed Leonard, Alma, and Charity. He would then kill his 11-year-old nephew, David, and his 9- and 13-year-old nieces, Teresa and Carol. He then rushed into the living room where he killed his 12-year-old niece, Anne, and his four remaining nephews, 17-year-old Leonard III, 16-year-old Michael, 15-year-old Thomas, and 4-year-old John. The massacre only took less than five minutes to complete. (laughs) 
James sat in the house for three hours before the police were called. As they arrived, he waited for them outside. The police described the scene as a slaughterhouse. There was so much blood splashed about that it was dripping through the floorboards into the basement. To this day, stains can still be seen on the wood. The murders shook the small community of Hamilton, Ohio and made headlines across the country. Those who knew James never believed that he was capable of such violence. He was a quiet, unassuming man and the perfect neighbor. James was arrested and charged with 11 counts of aggravated homicide. He refused to answer any questions and was very uncooperative. He made it clear that he plead for insanity. Yet prosecutors believed that the motive was clear. He wanted to plead for insanity so that he can be cured, so that he can return and claim the $300,000 inheritance. The trial was held in Hamilton. A three-judge panel found James guilty of 11 counts of murder and sentenced him to life in prison. A mistrial was declared and a second trial was held in Finlay, Ohio in June of 1975. The prosecutors would bring forth new evidence about James's target shooting and statements about solving his problem. In July, he received a new sentence of 11 consecutive life sentences in prison. He would of course appeal the decision and be granted a new trial in 1982. The defense claimed that their client was insane and would personally fund expert psychiatrists from all over the country to evaluate him. On July 23rd, James was found guilty of two counts of first degree murder, his mother and his brother, but found him not guilty for the other nine counts. For reason of insanity, he would receive one life sentence for each guilty count to be served consecutively. Today, James Rupert remains incarcerated in the Allen Oakwood Correctional Institution in Lima, Ohio. He was granted his first parole board hearing in 1995, but was denied, as was his second attempt in April of 2015. Rupert will not be eligible again for parole until 2025, which there is a good chance that he will remain behind bars until the day he dies. As for the Rupert family home, it still stands to this day and it is currently recited by another family. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this channel for more videos such as this. And don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when my next video goes up. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Canvas Pirate to be kept up to date with everything that goes on with me and my content. Once again, thank you all for watching and thank you for your tremendous support for this channel and I'll see you in the next video.